everybody, Steam Genie here, and welcome back to another playthrough of Congress Bad Fur Day for the Nintendo 64. We had left off last time doing a very annoying part of this game where everything was fucking wavy and underwater. And now it's time to relax and get drunk and fucking pee, man. Yeah, that's right, we gotta pee on some fuckers. Isn't that weird? This will be the first of many pee adventures that we have to do. Excuse me if I sound a little nasally. I am a tad sick. I might be blowing my nose and coughing as such. And there we go. We just start peeing on these fire guys. And we try and put them out so we don't fucking die, pretty much. Yeah, this is pretty annoying. Uh, you just push Z to get, you know, like a longevity kind of pee. And uh, that will help to get these guys out. The first couple of times I did this, I didn't realize you could push Z to actually kill them, so this always took me a long time, and that's the importance of a Let's Play, I would think, is like, if you're struggling with something, you know, like, you reach out and try and figure it out. I mean, I understand it's more noble to not, but, you know, if you're really just giving up, fuck it. Uh, so welcome. And yeah, just push Z, and uh, that'll help you out. Oh, god damn it. Oh no. Oh, it sucks to see, man. Jesus Christ. Well, that fucking sucks. I wish I didn't die. So I thought I'd show this because I didn't show it last time. Yeah, I resent how they call me furry guy. It's just very judgmental, you know? I'm called them fire guys. How about that? Fuck them, man. Hate being judged like that. That's why we get drunk. We get drunk to numb them. Actually, we're numbing them and we're peeing on them and we're destroying their souls. It's very brutal and disgusting. I mean, it's like, God. I don't think there's any way you could really defend yourself while trying to do this. I mean, you know, that would be nice if there was actually some strategy in this gameplay. I mean, I think that's why this game also didn't sell that well, regardless of it being near the end of the Nintendo 64's timeline. I don't necessarily believe, like, that attributed to it. Maybe it was also just the simplicity of the gameplay. I mean, it's not really meant to, take, to be taken seriously, obviously, but, you know, maybe not a lot of people were just into peeing on fire people, you know? Like, maybe that just wasn't a market that anybody wanted, you know? But here we are now, where I'm basically distributing what people <laughs> want to see this, you know? Alright, anyway, so, you get drunk as hell, and you literally peak your drunk. You make sure not to die. There's some chocolate over here to your left. You want to make sure to go to the left, because if you go to the right, you're just going to hit some door, at least from the left of the bar, and grab some Alka-Seltzer. The first of many. Well, at least in this part. I know we had some before. I don't know why I said that. I like it when he has the Alka-Seltzer, because now he just looks ready to go, you know? He doesn't look all beat up like he does. Hey, but there's some health over here, too. That's the switch we're gonna have to hit later, but we can't do anything now. We'll figure out how to get that later. Just try and hit up these pieces of chocolate to get our health up here. And then we just continue to get drunk. I think I only have three of them left. Aw, oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, he's just so drunk. Look at him. 
Yeah, so you only got to get them down to two, so I think there's five here. You just got to get rid of three of them. You mainly want to try and stay focused on one of them if you can. That's just the best way to get rid of them. It's so asininely painful, I tell you. Yeah, fuck you. Because you got to be accurate, you know? It's like, it's all that, like, shooter stuff, you know, that Rareware was trying to innovate. Oh, man. It's also my reluctancy to have any sort of defense. Oh, wow, look at that. Look at that. What the absolute fuck? I have one chocolate. Holy shit. Holy shit, dude. I gotta get some health in me right now. I hope, I hope I get some health in me right now. not peak Nintendo 64. If it isn't, I don't know what is. Alright, so you gotta go up to these corners here. Oh no, I'm gonna die, aren't I? Oh man. Maybe I should just try and get some more health before I do this? Fuck. So yeah, you go into this corner, and when he goes up there, you just gotta hit the switch. Then you go up to him, and then you clamp his balls with two bricks. same one twice you know <laughs> all right so yeah you gotta wait for him to be right there he's very easy it's not like the great mighty poo the great mighty poo is a bit challenging because you got stuff oh, i'll get to that anyway so you you get into a corner where each one of those are and then you go up to him and then you clamp his balls <laughs> and you have to do this four times in good old rareware fashion <laughs> oh come on man dude does he really not know where i am are you fucking kidding me oh my god dude what he just wanders by himself this is an amateur hour at karaoke club, buddy. Let's go. We're in a fucking battle. Are you serious? Just wander around? That's ridiculous. All right, fucking. You just jump in the corner and then you grab. <laughs> then, you, then you spoil him in poo water. Then you clamp his balls together with bricks. You don't even have to directly be under him. You just push B. There's only one corner left. Let's see, this isn't it, right? Oh, no, it is. But he's got to see you, or else he won't come towards you. It's such bullshit. Like, the programming in this game is not all that good sometimes. You 
you guessed it. That's how we get the switch open. With that door, we gotta get his balls. Love that conquer face animation. All right, so you're gonna wanna put one of these balls on the switch here, and I have the other ball right in front of the door over there, because that ball we're gonna want to have to roll down this hill here to attack this guy. And then that'll get us out of here. In traditional pump and dump style. Feels like a roller coaster entrance or something right here, you know? It's very much steel and graphic lights, and that will take us to the hundred bucks. It's a good feeling. So, you want some great stuff? Hell yeah, man. Oh. Hook me up, dude. Yeah. Man, that was ridiculous. Oh my god. man we do all that work for them and this is what we get just get the hell out of here man let that dog chase after you it's no big deal it's just part of the gameplay don't be scared as a matter of fact it aids the gameplay in destroying these old bats yeah leave their corpse to be forgotten heavy metal Anyways, you can pretty much bypass this with incredible ease, but you're gonna keep getting that animation every time he eats them though Just jump and twirl You'll have a nice lead every time. You'll be like three fishes ahead of him And then do it to reenact another movie parody Unfortunately, I don't really remember where that movie is parodied from. In fact, my only reference from that is the Sonic 06 game Where like there's like a whale chasing after you on the boardwalk. Anyways Look at him. He looks so small in the water. He's fucking massive, you know? Anyways, come up here to get the $300. And yes, it really is $300. Oh, uh, it's weird they all don't talk in unison. Damn, Conker. I didn't see bags under those cheeks. Anyways, yeah, now we got 1010. Monets. That's great. And so that ends the Area 1 world. I think we're ready to go fight the Great Mighty Pooh now. Yes, that's right, the Great Mighty Pooh. Everybody's favorite antagonist in the world of rareware, at least. A known forgotten gem, a beauty in the wild. A 
Okay, so I decided to fast forward from that because it was getting real laggy. If you look over here at the honeybee section, there will be another hundred dollars over there, but we'll worry about that later. Right now, let's head on over to the great mighty poo section, which is basically, you know, where we fought the bull and shit. Quite literally shit. We got shit balls. I want to show off this area real quick. It's the, um, the Federal Reserve Bank which is something that I didn't realize for the longest time because I had never actually beaten this game on the emulator I, I used. Somebody doesn't want me to be here. They certainly don't want me to go that way. Um, they don't go that way. Especially since the cutscenes make it seem like you should. Uh, is it safe, I wonder? Mm -hmm. Let's find out. And that's it. They just leave it to o open to interpretation, you know? It's like... I tried so many times, like they make it just impossible enough to where you can't do it now. That's literally the end of the game right there though. They literally just tease you. It's fucking hilarious, but there's nothing you can do. And it's connected to the background, it's, it's beautiful. It's just so fascinating that they do this for no reason. And it's just here in the Great Mighty Pooh section, all jumbled into one. Alright, so what am I doing right now? I guess we're gonna go get the hundred bucks, huh? We can't forget about money. We gotta grind for money. This is Conker's Bad Fur Day, damn it. We gotta go get money from the hive. It's only right. I'm gonna go this way, though. Or maybe this way. Fuck it. The fucking bee harmony. Oh my god. They try and make this game seem so innocent at times. Look at the way Conker runs. He's got like the. I think he's a fucking football player. Like. He's always jogging, he's on the run. All right, so you gotta be careful not to walk up to there or else you get attacked by some green caterpillar looking horn bitch. So you're gonna wanna jump up to here maybe. Or actually, I think this one's too high, I forgot. You wanna come over here? Yeah, over here. Yeah, I totally forgot. You go into this one and then you come over here to the one on the right. You think you're in the hive, but you're actually just, you know, in windy. You know, like you're literally outside, see? Oh my god. Why did that just happen? Why did I do that? Alright, so you go into the left. To come out to the right. Z jump to get to the top here. And then you're out for the hundred bucks. Hey, where the fuck you been, you ginger bastard? It's got good rhythm. Yeah, that's right, Conker, laughing all the way to the bank. <coughs> Alright, can we go fight Pooh now, you greedy bastard? Come on, I thought you said you were gonna do it. Quit wasting time, there's literally nothing else we have to do except fight Pooh right now to get to the next section of the game. So, the way to get to poo, you might think your first instinct is to take this poo ball up the direct route of the mountain, but what you actually want to do is come around the section where the bull is and take it up the mountain, because then you drop it on the dung beetle blocking the road below, but you gotta watch out for these dung beetles, or else you're gonna drop the fucking poo ball like a moron. But at least the house will always regurgitate more poo balls. And if you fall off the poo tower, your head will just kind of get stuck in the poo. So you don't really gotta worry about it. This definitely is a long process if you are a scrub. And hopefully this will speed up. Because I could have probably had this done already. But yet somehow I failed to do so. And I'm just continuously fucking up. So let's see if this happens right now. Okay, just bear with me. <clears throat> You know, you can't go wrong with taking a moment to listen to the Pooh soundtrack. So the best way to defend against the dung beetles is waiting for them to go into the exact second that they wait into their hole so that you could bring the poo balls around. This is actually much simpler than what happens later on in the game that I should note. Sometimes you can just get past them with ease. Oh man, I'm just talking over the best parts of the music, I'm sorry. I mean, it's just so accurate and the fart sounds are in perfect pitch, you know? 
Oh god, it's nauseating. Hell yeah. It's a shame, you know, because you fall off the poo tower and your head gets stuck in the poo. And, but you still get a poo ball, but you still gotta sit through so many fucking cutscenes. But at least you never lose health doing it. And I feel like that was kind of a smart thing, you know, because they knew, like, uh, you'd probably just be jumping off, you know? So anyways, once you've done that with the dung beetle, you just bring it up the actual path now. But you gotta be careful because the holes are much smaller where the dung beetles are coming out. Watch, you'll see. Okay, so you gotta be careful here because the holes are much smaller, or actually they're much bigger. What the fuck? God damn it. All right, so just be careful of the dung beetles. It's the same kind of deal going up the other way, except the holes are much bigger, so you might have an easier chance of getting by this time. Though your ball is gonna be much bigger, probably. And you see, that's where the dung beetle was that we exploded, and we wouldn't have been able to get up this far if we didn't do that. Trust me, I've done it, like... And, uh, you know, it's just so easy to want to bypass it. <laughs> This place is shite. But yeah, you just gotta do it. This is like a Beatles song, you know? Anyways, you bring the poo ball in and boom. Now we can fight the great mighty poo. Two boss battles in one. That's when you know it's gonna be a good video. Oh man, look at that. Now, if you try and go into the hole, you're not going to get very far. So, go up and grab the money. You just Z-jump to jump on the ledge and pray and hope, you know, that it works out. Because it will, you know. Such rhythm. Yeah, so, you know, you'll figure it out. I mean, it could look a little sketch. Damn, this really is the highest point in Windy, I think. Look at that level design. Yeah, see, you can just fall as high as the fucking tower and you'll be all right. To think this game was supposed to be so much bigger like Banjo-Tooie, but they just went against it, you know, and made a more concise game. All right, here we are. I'm gonna shut up now. Uh, hey, pal, what's where you going? I don't, all right, sir. Take, take my wife to get out of here. It's, it's still really bad in there. You just don't want to go in there. Calm down. Now, just calm down and tell me what's the matter. Right. Okay. It all started about two days ago. It was me and the lads. Well, I'm a cup of tea. The next thing we know, Chaz is gone. Oh, we couldn't find him. We thought, oh, maybe he's just gone off, you know, like, go a bit of shopping or something. Never came back. Basil was next. He was just walking along, minding his own business. So I stood down and said, hey, Basil, how you doing there, hey? Mate. He went over. And that was it. This thing came out of the shape. And I thought to myself, oh, no, I'm getting out of here. So I actually ate first. And when I came out, I thought it was all clear. The lads were gone. The bastards had nailed me in. I'm out of here. You can do what you like. There's some money up there if you can be asked to get it. See you. It's kind of beautiful how you just get that little bit of foreshadowing right there. I think it's very cool. Look at that. Conquer be drinking a soda when you're AFK. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Break on. <laughs> How you doing, guys? Bring me some sweet corn. What the absolute hey, shit? Wow. Yeah, right? Okay, wow. I don't see no one. Hmm. Okay. Conquer be schizoid. Right? Like, you just do what he says. 
Yeah, fuck up that sweet corn and just uh, bring it, bring it to the edge here and chuck it in. There's no other way to really give it to the great mighty poo. You only get this cutscene once, though. Um. Isn't it great when a video game about poop influences you to eat corn? That's what I've been doing recently. I'm just like, yeah, I'll eat corn. I mean, helps you poop, right? Does that make sense? Look at this. This is what I was talking about from the from the bourgeoisie, big, bald, boiler, bullock fucker. It's because poo drops from the fucking ceiling. When you're reversing the, the boiler, you know, you don't got poo dropping from the ceiling to fuck you up. This shit, like, you could be midair and you could die. You could fall off and have to fight the boss all over again. I mean, it really is like classic Rareware Nintendo 64 action right here. Whereas everything else kind of feels like a completely different game. I mean, I suppose, like, when you're in the later levels, you know, it could feel a bit like Diddy Kong Racing, but, you know, then there's, like, the ending parts, like, you know, that are just, like, you know, PS1 level quality, like, stuff that I just can't, you know, even describe at the moment, because we are doing a fight against a giant poo monster that needs corn. So that's why I'm just putting myself through this, because I really just want to get to the other parts of this game that are just so fascinating because you know it's like it, this game is more than just poo you know a giant poo monster it's like once you get past all this you know um yeah dare i say gross out humor you know then it's uh you know it really is like a beautiful like styled game with a lot of like innovative elements to it with adult themes and there's nothing wrong with it i mean it's a miracle that this didn't get adults only you know like this is literally an entire section made of poo and like Shigeru Miyamoto was like absolutely and put the Nintendo seal of quality on it so you can come up here to get the uh get some chocolate uh all around here mainly only at this part though chocolate will appear I mean you got some like above the handles and stuff but that's really it so you grab corn and you offer it to the great mighty poo you gotta attend three sections here you gotta go all the way to the right so the poo can come out and then you go all the way to the left again in pure level design really i mean it really just oh wow that was damn close it really just takes you all around you know oh fuck like it's a very small map but it just takes you all around you see like there's nowhere else to go but here so this is where we're going to start fighting the great mighty poo and then it's going to go to the left and then that's where we end basically where we started and then we have to go back up here to the middle and then we go into the center and that's how we win it's like that's their entire level design and it takes you through basically the entire thing and it's like you don't really have to do much you don't, you don't need like a giant thing and it's like this was made in 2001 this was post banjo tooie thank god i fucking got that corn i was like i was like jesus christ i don't want to keep talking you know i want to get to the fight uh, <laughs> all right so here we go uh -oh. Mighty Poo, and I'm going to throw my shit at you. A huge supply of tears comes from my chocolate starfish. How about some scat, you little twat? Alrighty, and this begins our first battle of the Great Mighty Poo, and I'm going to, oh my god, a pixel faded. I should really focus on the game material. How about some scat, you little twat? Alright, anyways. So, you know, when he's chucking poo at you, you just gotta chuck the toilet paper back at him, and then you chuck it in his mouth. And you do this, I think, 
Well, I guess three times after you've done it. So you do it once, then you do it another time, then you do it one more time, and then you you do it the fourth time. Oh shit, I'm sorry. God damn his fish eggs. So once you do it in one section, you see there's a giant poo mound here that we're not going to be able to use, so the game pushes us to go to another section, making it slightly more challenging, thereby not really use, utilizing a lot of elements of, uh, you know, even game design to really, like, make this game all that complicated, you know, programming-wise, like, really just pushing you to the other side of the map, you know, makes you feel like you're doing something. I mean, oh shit, but look at that weird graphic there. You know, I'm obviously just not very good at this. I'm, I'm much better at just throwing the toilet paper in his mouth. So the first time you do it, you only have to do it once. The second time you do it, you have to do it twice. And then the third time, I believe you have to do it three times. I'm just chucking it at him, I guess. I don't give a fuck, you know? Oh shit. Oh man, I could die right here. That's sketchy. There's no health here. Fuck. Go back. God damn it. I'll get him. Yes. Now I'm really getting rather mad. Oh, like a niggly, tickly, shitty little pack nut. When I knock you out with all my bab, I'm going to take your head and ram it off my butt. Yeah, butt. My butt. Yeah, butt. That's right, my butt. Yeah. My butt. My butt. See, and that window cracks a bit, so that means we gotta go to the last platform over there by the beginning. I'm really running low on health. I don't know if I could do this. Is there any chocolate back there? No, I took it all. Oh, well, there's one. There's one chocolate I saved. See, there's money there. I could do this, guys. I really could. But you gotta go back there. Yo, and he'll chuck poo balls that far. What a jerk off. See his pitch gets higher. I don't know, we gotta do this three times. Well, he does come over here. All right, what am I gonna do? I guess just run around him if you got low health. There's nothing else you could do, just run away. Stay close to the sign. Just run away if you got low health. Just run. Just run around the circle. Get back when he looks comfortable. A good tip is if you don't know where he's gonna go next, then stay in the opposite direction. Or just stay in that direction that you're in because chances are that he'll pop up there next. Because if you look right or left and he's not there, then that chances are he's just behind you. So just stay forward and then he'll pop up in front of you. It's just a good little tip there. Yeah, so just run around a circle if you got no health and you're scared about not being able to hit the toilet paper. I mean, I guess I'm like over exhausting this, but I don't know. I'm just taking chances here. Oh shit, you see, I gotta get back. And then there he is. Oh, I got him, nice. Oh, that's great. All right, so you gotta do it one more time. This is the third chance. This is pretty exciting, actually. What the fuck? Holy shit. Literally. Holy shit. Yeah, just run. Oh my god. Oh my god. I didn't even know that could happen. God damn.
Uh -oh. Alright, so we do the great mighty poo again. Trial and error, man. Trial and error. That graphic on the light bulb is giving me goosebumps, man. It's making me uncomfortable. All right, so we're not gonna fuck around here. We're just gonna, we're just gonna like chuck the toilet paper. We're gonna be fucking soldiers about this. You know, just chuck them. Get every single one, chuck it in his mouth. Always be ready, like a soldier, you know? Or a warrior, whatever. All right, so now we're on the second tempo. Good thing we're on a full health here, so we can get, we can come back to this later. Oh, I gotta watch out for this poo ball. Oh man, this is great though. I mean, this is the kind of thing you want to like, you know, do when you're like sick, because it's pretty nauseating. You know, and it just fits the tone and mood. It's like, oh my god, this is something you do on like a school day, maybe, or you know, like. Or like when you get off from school, you know, like I just got off from, I mean, college myself, right? Like, I'm an adult man, you know, playing this adult game. <laughs> you know, it's honest, whatever. Holy shit. Like literally, holy shit. I can't believe I gotta do this twice, but I'm doing much better. You know, you have to have more timing when you wait for the poo. Like, when he chucks the poo, just chucks the poo. That's a funny word. When he chucks the poo, you gotta wait like maybe a, a second. Oh, wow, that, that was pretty good timing right there. All right, so now we move on to the third one. And that's it. So we move on now, we're at the last one already. Motherless fuck, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my forgotten son. Well, have you got him this time? Holy crap, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? It's the great mighty poo for the third time. Like I said, this guy's a challenge. What with the poo dropping from the ceiling and him chucking poo, I mean, you just gotta wait until it's severely close to you so you can just get the timing right with the toilet paper. So you see what I'm doing? And then just chuck it in his mouth, you know? And then just get out of there as soon as possible. Like, don't even wait for him to sing. Push the L button to skip that shit. You know, after a while, it's just like, okay, I don't need to hear you sing every time. I mean, I know it was probably entertaining, but, you know, and like, you could just listen to it, it'll be stuck into your head forever, but I don't know. You know, like, I'm in the business of getting this done right now. Like, holy hell, I gotta do this three times. Like, that's a bummer, man. That's really just a fucking shame. Yeah, just chuck it in his mouth. Yeah, if you chuck too early, it's just gonna bounce off of him. But we gotta do this twice when you get here, so... You just gotta sit and deal with it, you know? You just gotta have toilet paper equipped at all times, you know, just to defend against the mighty poo. I mean, it's legit, you know? It's just it's what you gotta do. Oh shit, that rhymed. I said I'm out of time. Finna hit that lime. Sorry, I just said finna. I gotta calm down. Oh. Alright. Thank God that fucking piece of poo didn't hit me right then. But I mean, I got full health. I'm doing much better this playthrough, it seems. Yeah, just get it in his mouth. Just get the hell out of there. Don't even wait. Skip that shit. Come on. In the business of getting this done. Might as well just leave it all three attempts. I mean, you know, it's like Rare World wants you to do this three times, so might as well leave it all three attempts. Show the honesty of this gameplay. I mean, fuck. Nobody's fucking perfect, right? 
Oh my god. Yeah, and then he gets so much closer. It's a bit of a challenge with the camera angle, really. You know, it's hard to, like, really have an accurate hit detection of that. All right, so you see, like, he's behind me, right? So just wait to the left. He's right there. You see what I'm saying? So I know he's behind me, which means there's only two other places he would pop up since I'm over here, and that's right in front of me or to the left of me. So if he's behind me and he's singing, then that means he's he's gonna just pop up right in front of you and it's just gonna be easy. Sorry I failed so many times. It's just like, god damn. It's so fucking hard. It really is hard, all this shit they design. So yeah, he can only pop up there to the right of you and then behind you, so you know, just estimate that like where he is and he is gonna be. Like some chess shit. The ideal game for where where's chess. The ultimate challenge. how that jiggles right there that's kind of disturbing it almost looks like a thigh but as if that weren't enough you have defeated the great mighty poo at this point and the music gets to its peak levels of awesomeness you have to actually run all the way up here to flush him personally even though you already went through the hell of defeating him you could fall down get hit by poo lose all of your health if you're on one health and still fucking die so you better haul your ass to that flushing device to get rid of this monster immediately because that's what he is a freaking monster So disturbing. Now that's what I call a bowel movement. And thank God for that joke. Or else we'd all be so disturbed. You know, it could be a horror movie. Oh man, you know I'm gonna have to fucking save after that. What the hell? Oh hell yeah, man. Like that was some shit, dude. Like having to do that three times in a row, like what the hell? Fuck that. Anyways, you go get the money, get an extra hundred dollars, you know we out here grinding for that paycheck, we are adults, we gotta pay that mortgage, pay off that car, whatever the hell he said, butlers and spondooly, that's it, you know, he already flushed, so you gotta just go down that hole, and man, let me tell you, man. In 64, when I first did this, it was unplayable. Like, I just had to guess where the uh, door had opened up and and just do it, you know? So I'm excited to see if this will work right now. I mean, it was, like, implayable. Oh, man, nice. Look at that, beautiful. That's how the game was made to be enjoyed, man. This is exactly how it looks on the N64, too. Like, no comparisons, like... And we unlock a new cutscene! He's like, you better have a good excuse this time. That is the last time he sounds me up. Tonka, I've had a just about up to... Who are you? Look. Whatever it is you're selling, I'm just not interested. Well? Well. Leave it to conquer to have abusive women. Jesus. That's pretty intense. 
Anyways, so now let's try the hardest part of the game. They have this one up here because they know you're going to consistently die trying this, and they have all this health here in case if you're low on health. Basically, you have to swim underwater, which is already a pain in the ass because everything is jiggly and you have to go for air. And then they put these razor blades in here, so you have to master your timing to get through them, which can be a pain in the ass because you don't know how to judge what the hell you're looking at and if your timing is in the right place. Look, look at this shit. How am I supposed to...